This yogurt producing factory works 24 hours a day. Milk comes from 14 regions of Russia. In 24 hours, the factory processes about 900 tons. I'm facing a real challenge. I need to accept some milk. I won't have to milk cows, as it's already been done. The milk comes in a milk truck like that. To accept it, it's necessary to screw loose this hose and connect it to this drain spigot. Unscrew and take it there, like that. Now, with the help of the threaded joint, we fasten the hose to, to the spigot itself. By the way, this cistern's capacity is 24 tons of milk. About 60 milk trucks like that come here every day. Okay. That's it. Fastened. We can start draining off. A sample is taken from every cistern and sent to the laboratory, where they check whether the milk complies with the quality standard. Specialists take a dozen tests to check quantitative content of fat and proteins, acidity, as well as harmful substances. If milk happens to be of inappropriate quality, we will not accept it, as we won't be able to make what we want from it. Such milk will be sent back to the supplier. After laboratory tests, the milk gets into tanks for unpasteurized milk. Why are such tanks necessary? That's because we don't make milk sour directly. We separate it into two fractions. Look here, that's the equipment which... A UFO! Yes, it's a separator which divides the unpasteurized milk into skimmed milk and cream. In a sectional view, the separator is a set of spinning disks on the central axis. These plates gain the speed of up to 10,000 revolutions per minute. The milk which gets into the machine starts spinning with the same speed. Under the action of centrifugal force and gravity, the cream, being a light fraction, moves to the center. The milk, being a heavier fraction, gathers on the edges of the drum, and then it's removed through special hoses. Is that a centrifuge? Yes, it's based on the same idea. So, all in this room, all this equipment, are those separators? Here are three stations. Three stations. Three stations. We call them MSD among ourselves. It's equipped with a separator, a pasteurizer, and a heat exchange unit, of course. After separation, each of the ingredients, skimmed milk and cream, is cooled to the preserving temperature and gets into tanks. After separation, milk and cream set off on their many kilometers long journey through the factory's pipelines. Most interesting, then the two components are mixed again, but in a specific proportion. Besides milk and cream, yogurt has other ingredients, white powders. In the powder ingredient shop floor, the powders necessary for its production are added into the yogurt. Besides fresh milk, powdered milk is used as well. It is used as an additional source of protein and makes yogurt thicker as well. Special additives, stabilizers, provide for its homogeneous consistency. Well, judging by the number of pipelines, machines, and noise level, we are in some very important place. Am I right? Yes, in fact, this is the most important place here. That's the main process. It's here that all yogurt and curd cheese production processes are concentrated. Closed type production process is necessary to ensure that the product doesn't come into contact with the external environment. After milk and cream are blended in the specific ratio and addition of the dry ingredients, the mixture is pasteurized. After pasteurization, the mixture is cooled, homogenized. While the homogenization process is forcing the mixture through holes small enough at the pressure of 200 to 300 bars, this is a very high pressure. It's done to break up fat globules in the milk. 
and it turns out into some kind of foam, does it? It doesn't become foam. It becomes uniform. It does not contain any particles and so on. After the mixture becomes consistent, starter cultures are added. These are living microorganisms which provide for the fermentation of the milk, and the yogurt obtains its specific taste and useful properties. Apparently, by the look of it, the fruit shop floor does not correspond to its tasty name. Yet, it smells great here. The thing is that in these tanks, they store jam to be added into yogurts. In this one is banana, for example. Strawberry and pear are here. I wish they weren't closed so tightly. Shall I try my luck with this one or that one? Fruit filler is, in essence, jam, but very concentrated. That's why you won't manage to eat it with a spoon. We buy fruit from suppliers. We have over five of them. It's like usual jam. The fruit filler consists of the fruit itself, juices, fruit mash with pieces of fruit, without pieces of fruit. Natural corn flour is added to make the structure of the fruit filling of certain viscosity so that it could get to the machine by the pipeline. Fruit fillers also include food colors and flavoring agents, most often non-natural. We are in the packaging area. All the necessary ingredients come to such machines, yogurt, fillers of all kinds. They are filled in plastic cups. There are 16 lines. On this line, for example, strawberry yogurt is being filled now. At the stage of packing, everything is done by robots. Some of them look like aliens from the future. Usual plastic cups in which yogurt is filled are also produced here. They are stamped from a sheet of food-grade plastic using hot presses. As a result, the complete product comes off the conveyor. All stages of production take about 48 hours. Before going to the shops, the product is sent for testing in the laboratory. If experts expose some deficiency, there is a taste mixture or some ingredients that are not prescribed in a recipe occur in the product, then this yogurt batch is rejected. One would think, yogurt, nothing special. But this factory has 120 names of it. The factory outputs 700 tons of this sour milk product every day. And if we convert it in such bottles, we'll get about 5 million of them. And one of them I need to taste indeed.